How have you been blessed by God? I think if most people were asked that, they would think of something recent that's happened, some fortune, some good thing that happened, some nice person that came in their life. Uh, maybe they think of, uh, maybe they found five bucks on the street or something or got a promotion or whatever it might have been. Maybe we'd think of family if we stop and reflect for a little while that we've got family around us or friends or something like that. In Ephesians chapter 1, we're called upon to praise our Heavenly Father, and, and we've been talking about our purpose in life being for God's pleasure. We've been made for God's pleasure. Uh, but praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because of all the spiritual blessings that He's given us in the heavenly realms. And He goes on to list a, a great number of them, but how we've been chosen, how we've been adopted into His family, how we've been predestined, how we've been washed clean, how we've received the spirit of grace into our lives, and how we've been given the wisdom to understand the plan of God for all eternity, to bring everything under the headship of Christ. One of the things that's listed in there is that we're adopted, adopted by God. That is, we have become children of God. And for the next few devotionals, we're going to be talking about the second purpose in our life. We're following through Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. But the second purpose in life, the first one is that we plan for God's pleasure. The second one is that we're formed for God's family. What does it mean to be part of it? How do we become part of it? What's the benefits of being part of it? And then how should our attitude change towards our new family that we're in because we might love our family that we grew up in we might hate that family we might be there about it but we have been formed for a new family God's family God is relational and he has called us to join in the relationship of father son and spirit in a special wonderful way by the adoption into his family through the Lord Jesus Christ just want to read from John's Gospel this morning. We're in John chapter 1 and we see this. It's talking about the eternal purposes of God and why Jesus came, but it's, it's tied up with God's family. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. And so it starts off with looking at this grand picture of the eternal God in his creative purposes, that Jesus and the Father together created the world from nothing and formed the light and formed everything that was made. But we read on, there was a man, verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John, he came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And in that paragraph, we see that the eternal God, creator of everything who's far beyond anything in this galaxy is so wonderful that he was coming to bring light into this world that he cared and, and wanted to be part of it and intrude into it. He's not distant and sitting back. And then we find out in verse 10, he was in the world and the world that was created through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name who were born not of natural descent or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but born of God. And so there you go, the eternal God who made the universe, entered into it, became light to enter it, uh, came as a man, as it turns out, the Lord Jesus, which is a, it's going to go on and talk about, and we've seen his glory, the glory of the one. Moment. But why did he come? He came to give us the right to be called children of God. We've been formed for God's family. We've been saved for God's family. We've been adopted into God's family. And it's a wonderful blessing and a wonderful privilege. It's, it's something that goes beyond the blessings of this world. You know, you know, our families are great and all that most of the time. Some, you know, some of us have had terrible experiences, but uh, here is a greater blessing. Here is a family that's not just of this world and of this time, but is going to be eternal 
and we get to join in the relationship of the Father, Son, and Spirit. In the Bible, it talks often about being children. It talks about how we become children of God. We're, we're born again, not born through natural means. Jesus has that conversation with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And Nicodemus can't understand the words, be born again. Uh, you know, how do you enter again into your mother's womb? It can't be done. You're a fully grown person. So, no, it can't be done. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about being born of spirit. Right? He's not... He's saying you're born once in the normal way, but then you're born again into God's family. You're given a new start, a fresh start. Peter talks about that new birth. Some people freak out about what's you know, being born again, born again Christians, and uh, sometimes that can refer to people who are just sold out and and extreme. But that to be born again is something that all Christians who have trust in the Lord Jesus. Have. We have a new birth into a living hope, we're told in 1 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh, praise be to God because in his mercy he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. When we come to trust his death in our behalf and his resurrection, that he's paid for our sins, that he's alive again and he's freely giving out uh, forgiveness and grace and love, we become part of God's family. That's what it means to be born again. But as part of God's family, we have all sorts of wonderful benefits. Uh, just like your kids will do or will have uh, benefits of being in your family or that you have benefits from being in your family. Uh, you, when you're born, you're given a great gift. Right? We're given great gifts uh, when we're born again into God's family. We receive the family name. We have uh, the family likeness. We get family privileges. We have access to uh, to our father in a in a unique, wonderful way, and we get the family inheritance. And just think through some of those things. We get we get a wonderful gift at our birth. The Holy Spirit. Uh, when you came to believe in Christ, you were given a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. The Holy Spirit. Paul talks about that in Ephesians chapter 1. He talks about it in 1 Corinthians in chapter 1 and 2, that we have this blessing, this wonderful gift, uh, as part of the of being born into this family of a deposit guaranteeing inheritance, and it's the Holy Spirit with us. We're told in Romans chapter 8 that that spirit is a spirit of sonship. It, 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 it enables us, the spirit enables us to call on God as our heavenly Father. He is not just the God out there or your God. He is our God. He is our Father in heaven. And Jesus teaches us to pray that way. We have this beautiful intimate access because we are family. Uh, we have a family name. We are named Christians because of Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We, we receive the family likeness as Jesus starts to transform us through his word and by his spirit to be more and more like him. Uh, Romans chapter 8 again talks about how God does the work that he does, right? And he's doing it for good so that you might be like Christ. So that you'll grow like him, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And uh, we're given the family privileges. Uh, there are all sorts of things and rights that are ours. Uh, by adoption into this family that we didn't have before. We have the right to call on God. We have the right to um, sing his praises and declare his name. We have all these, uh, all these things that come to us because we're part of God's family. And, and we have access, as I've said already, to our Father. We can go straight into the throne room of God. Uh, go, imagine going over to England and you wanted an audience with the Queen. You would probably not be granted it. There'd have to be some special reason or you know, some state affair. Or, uh, but you could, you could beg for it and she might give you a couple of minutes of a time. If you were lucky, you might get to shake the hand of the Queen. Uh, and that's not because she's mean or anything. It's just that she, uh, she's just who she is and in a position of authority and doesn't have time to meet with everyone, whereas God invites you to come into his throne room anytime by prayer, by talking to him, by building that relationship. And we have a family inheritance. Peter, again in 1 Peter chapter 1, talks about uh, in God's great mercy, he's given us new birth, so he's born again into this family, 
into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and but get this, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. We, uh, the inheritance we receive in this life from our normal families are you know, houses, cars, objects, things like that. Uh, and they're all gonna rust, fade, fall apart, be destroyed. But our inheritance with God lasts forever. Nothing can take it away. Uh, nothing can spoil or mar it. In fact, it's wonderful. No more mourning or crying or pain, Revelation tells us. It's like, it's like a wedding day. You know, as the, the bride, which is the, the church, God's family, comes and enters into this wedding union forever with our Lord and Saviour Jesus. And it's a feast and there's nothing bad about it. It's wonderful, an inheritance with him that can never perish, spoil or fade. So have you reflected on the fact that you are part of God's family? I assume you are. If you're not, it's well, you, to become part of it, you've got to trust the Lord Jesus. And so the, first, the way to end it is to, to speak to him and say, Lord, forgive me for not being uh, yours, for living a life away from you. I want to be back. The prodigal son came back and said, I'm not worthy to be called your son. But the father said, oh, my son's back. He just rejoiced and threw a great party, which is what God does when we trust in him. But assuming you are part of God's family, you have come back and received that grace and mercy. Have you considered that being part of his family is the greatest blessing of all? And so many privileges, so many things. We've got a great inheritance. We have the spirit with us. Uh, are you living a life of praising God because he's brought you into his family? And how does that shape, as we'll think about in our following devotions the next few days, how does being part of God's family, the fact that you were formed for God's family, that this is God's purpose for your life, change the way that you interact with your Christian brothers and sisters? We've been got a new father, but we also have these brothers and sisters out there and does the blessing of being brought in that family show in your life? Does it resonate? Does it bring you joy? It ought to, and it ought to change how you engage uh, with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Why don't we pray and thank God for the blessings of being born again into his family. Father, we thank you for the new birth, that it doesn't come by human effort, doesn't even come by human decision, it comes by your grace and love being poured in our lives and you calling us to trust you. Father, help us to be those who trust you and who rejoice in this adoption that you've given us into your family. Father, please help us to see the privilege it is to be part of your church and help us to see part of the purpose of our life is to um, bring honour to you as you have been um, brought on to us by calling us in your family and giving us the family name. Father, give us the family likeness. Help us to be more and more like our older brother Jesus who has gone before us. And Father, we pray that we wouldn't spurn the family inheritance or waste the gifts that you give, but you'd help us to uh, use them for your glory and to enjoy being part of your family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you again for another devotion tomorrow.